Vermouth is a great modifier in cocktails. Adds depth, character, and a little bit of dryness. Today we're gonna to try Blanco Vermouth. Probably the le lesser known of the three. Here. Here in the state of Iowa, Midwest. <laughs> Maybe not the lesser known, but the lesser used inside right. cocktails for sure. Right. So what is, do you remember what a vermouth is, right? It is a fortified wine, fortified wine. And what does that mean? It means it's a wine that is fortified. Exactly. <laughs> Fuck it, that's our education for this. Uh, but no, uh, a fortified wine means they use uh, a neutral spirit and they add herbs and spices to basically kind of like give it some more depth than just a glass of wine. Any fortified wine, you have port, sweet, blanco, dry. You want to keep them refrigerated after you open, you'll extend the shelf life of them by a couple of weeks. So today we got, I said blanco or blanc, um, very similar. We have Dolan, Lillette, and Koki. We bought the smaller bottle of Dolan because we don't need three, uh, Blanco vermouth and they only sell it in these sizes and these are all 20 to 22 dollars or cheaper So not too bad in price And today we're going to try it in the Vesper martini. That's the James Bond martini. I'm a big fan of it You're not a huge fan of a Vesper martini. I might be a fan if a different vermouth is used Correct. So that's what we're gonna try today. So let's go ahead and try these out. Let's try Let's start with Dolan. Dolan, okay Go ahead, I'll let you pour. You pour smaller than I do. Yes. All right, Dolan is from France and it comes in at 11%, I believe? 16%. 16. All right. So basically, a, a way easiest way to describe Blanco Vermouth would be it's dry vermouth, but with more citrus notes and a little bit more herb, herb, herbal notes. So it's between sweet and dry, basically. So you definitely get the grapiness of the, of the wine in there. But there's this, this kind of candy kind of smell to it, like, yeah, and not like just like kind of like a rock candy almost, like a citrus, so like a citrus candy. candy mm -hmm. Yeah, it smells delightful. Mm -hmm. Um, and it tastes equally delightful. It's yep. light, refreshing. Little bit of herbal notes. Yep. Not too aggressive on any one way or the other. I agree. I like it. Candy. Good job, Dolan. This one is also out of France. Comes in at seventeen percent alcohol volume. It is a lot more viscous. This, okay. This has way more of a wine grape. Yes. Where the Dolan was just a little bit more like citrusy and fruity. Yeah. Not necessarily able to pinpoint a specific fruit if you just on a cursory glance. Yeah. This one is definitely great. This definitely has like kind of like a Pinot Grigio, Pinot Gris kind of smell to it, you know. If I had to pick a specific type of wine. I don't pour wine in. I pour enough wine. I stick to my own Rieslings that I don't mm -hmm. know the grapes, but. Okay, so it's definitely way more grape forward in the taste. The mm -hmm. the sweetness and the citrus are a lot more in the background. Yes, and there's really not a whole lot of herbal punchiness in there. Mm -mm. It's mostly the grape flavor. I do like that. It's it is good. good. Yes. Yep. This is very good. And Koki is the only Italian vermouth on the table. 16.5%. So they're all same ABV. Yep. And Koki, from the sweet vermouth episode we did, I do remember liking Koki the best. And I feel like it had a very specific profile. So on the nose, this is the most herbalist. Yes. Herbally, herbalist one of all, all of them. Yes, it is by far the most herbal, the least amount of fruit. Mm -hmm. This is the driest, has a, a kind of a drying mm -hmm. effect to it. Cause again, I think cause it's so herbal forward, it's yeah. gonna dry your palate out a little bit more. It is, it is a lot drier, it is bitter. Mm -hmm. But I don't hate it. I get a little bit of the vanilla. Yeah, there is a little citrus in the background. I, I like it, I think out of all the three of them, that's my favorite. Yeah, because it's simultaneously <clears throat> the sweetest, the most bitter, and has the biggest flavors. Yeah, in theory, all three of these should be completely different in what it does in a Vesper Martini. So there are many different recipes on a Vesper Martini out there. We're gonna stick to the ratios of Three, two, one. So one and a half ounces of gin, one ounce of vodka, and half ounce of blanc vermouth. And we are going to stir this cocktail down, unlike James Bond, who's- Who prefers it shaken. Shaken, so. Why? Who knows? Cause the writers probably didn't know what the fuck they were doing when they wrote the script. So let's make a Vesper martini.
I know most all martinis look clear and stuff like this, but just add a little depth of like kind of like that yellow hue kind of mm -hmm. just makes it look kind of more of this crystal. Yeah, it does. Very crystal line. Mm -hmm. All right. Which one are you going to start off with? I'm going to start off with Poopy Guy. Okay. That is the technical term of that gla technical term for that glass, Koopy guy. Yes. Now the the garnish does take away a lot of the smell from this cocktail because all I can smell is lemon. Yep. Which kind of makes sense, and you, you, you know, something to brighten it up a little bit with. Yep. That is a that is a martini. It is a very big and strong martini. I feel like the vermouth is lost very much in this one. Yep. I don't really taste a whole lot of it. Yeah. Um, mostly I taste beef eater. Is that what you use? Nope. What did you use, Hendrix? No. What gin did you use? Bombay Sapphire. <gasps> That's all we had the most of. That's what I made in the in Zoni too was a beef eater or a Bombay Sapphire. But that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Bombay Sapphire. Your, your gin choice is really going to stand out in this 100%. Yes. Okay. This one, you can taste the vermouth more. I can taste the vermouth more. I can taste the herbaceousness mm -hmm. of it. I can taste a little bit of sweetness on it. Yeah. But other than that, it is very faint because once again, it's only half an ounce against an ounce and a half. two and a half ounces of spirit. Yep. And the last guy. Again, I don't know why I'm even trying to smell it. Okay. Well, that's just, I think you still need to. Like, I think that's just part of the experience. This is tougher than I expected. Man. I taste something in there. I taste vermouth in there. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be honest with you. I just don't think I'm a big bomb Bombay Sapphire. Gin. Absolutely not. So I think that's going to be. The biggest battle right now is fighting through that into what is actually the vermouth. I think with this drink, that's your biggest deciding factor. Yeah. The sweet or the blanc vermouth is going to give it some more characteristics. Right. But if you're if you're not a fan of that gin, mm -hmm. it's just not going to matter. We've made this cocktail before with beef eater, and I really enjoy it. Yes. I feel like this middle one has to be cokey. It's the sweetest. Okay. It has the most vermouth flavor. Okay. And it doesn't taste overwhelmingly of grape. This one I think is a lie because I get more great. And this one I believe is the Dolan because in my experience, anything made with Dolan, the vermouth takes the back seat to the spirit. Locked in? I'm a little nervous about it. <laughs> Let me try this one. Yes, this one has a signet. This one has the cookie finish. Right. It helped. <laughs> and that's the one you got right. I only got one of them right? Yep. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Once again, I think this is gin choice. I think because the Bombay Sapphire has the menthol and it, mm -hmm. the other botanicals in it. Yeah. It's kind of playing games with the sweet room with choice. The, these yes. two. Yeah. So this is the right order. I think the Koki is very easy to pick up because it's, these two are similar in taste. This kind of stands out on its own because of the herbal the less yeah. grapey flavor. It's gonna be able to kind of punch through more. Well, that and Koki does have a very signature finish. Absolutely. Like the, the sweet vanilla-y mm -hmm. notes that Koki finishes with. Yeah. I like this cocktail. I We just prefer Beef Eater as our gin, especially when it's gonna be a gin forward. I prefer any gin Over other Bombay. than Bombay Sapphire. I bet with uh, Roots of Ruin. That would've been phenomenal. That would've been a crazy drink, so. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'd say try this cocktail out. Get a Blanc Vermouth. If you can find a little guy, buy that. Yep. You know, or, if, you know, just try it out. I think it makes a good cocktail as a spritzer, too, if you're just looking for something super light, low ABV. I could easily drink all of these, all three of these on the rocks with a twist, Groundhog's Day. Like she said earlier, we did a Sweet Vermouth review, and that one was really good. Mm -hmm. It was good. All three were phenomenal. Yeah. Go ahead and check that out. And then until next time, everyone. Cheers. Cheers.